Hi, everybody. I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee. As we uh, take a look at uh, the West Coast, uh, which is lit up like a Christmas tree uh, this morning, and we've got um, a storm, the latest in a series of storms that has moved. This one's moved inland into southern Oregon. You can see the trailing front here, uh, and uh, the different warnings from high wind warning to winter weather advisories to winter storm warnings to flood warnings, flood watches, et cetera, et cetera, all over the place. Uh, in the uh, west and uh, we'll extend it up a little further into the Pacific Northwest and, and flood watches you can see some winter weather advisories up in parts of uh, Montana uh, the high winds winter storm warning uh, it, it's just uh, it's, a, it's a large storm it's not a particularly intense storm from the standpoint of pressure but it does have a, a bit of a reach as it is extending um, some of its nastiness uh, inland toward the Rockies and there's another one coming uh, that's going to be uh, coming in over the weekend that uh, will be, I think, another uh, major storm, but it won't be like the one that uh, it'll be, I think, a little less formidable than the one that came in last weekend. By the way, at this point, I just want to welcome everybody to my YouTube channel uh, for today. Uh, welcome to uh, my you new YouTube channel visitors. And if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's absolutely free and you'll get notified uh, uh, videos uh, as soon as they post. I'm trying to get to broaden out my scope here in terms of the coverage, uh, the weather coverage, because a lot of you have asked me, um, could I talk about your this area or that area? And I will do the best I can. I may not be able to get to you every day. My main focus is in the east, particularly the northeast. But uh, when there's things going on, I certainly will address them. Now, here's the, the radar from this morning, and it's uh, much less activity, but still some rain going on and some snow in the mountains and the Sierra Nevadas and so on extending up uh, into parts of Idaho it looks like even a little band of showers down um, not too far from Los Angeles uh, coming in from off the Pacific Ocean now here's the latest satellite loop so here's the storm that's moved in the actual low center you can pick it out uh, go right about here uh, in in terms of the swirl and the, on the satellite and this is a visible satellite picture so once the Sun is up you actually can see what the clouds look like and at night we get to the infrared view and right here uh, this is the next major storm uh, that I think is going to be important because this one is going to uh, be rather formidable let me just uh, unzoom that because I really didn't want to do that um, so let's uh, take a look here so this storm is going to track pretty much east south eastward toward the uh, coast of California it actually will be further south than this probably go in near somewhere near San Francisco and then from there probably turn uh, northward but its energy is going to extend pretty far to the south again and uh, particularly in southwestern California uh, there's going to be another one of these feeders of moisture uh, coming down from the tropics to uh, bring in some uh, very heavy rains uh, the storm is still um, five, four days away. I mean, we're talking here probably weather conditions deteriorating uh, over the weekend, uh, and the worst of it may be Sunday into Monday. And being that you still haven't dried out from the first one, you're still getting more rains with that, um, the threshold for flooding is going to be a lot lower this time around. So let's look at what the models are saying on today's GFS run. So here's our storm right now. In the west, we've got this low uh, down in Arkansas with a trailing weak front up to another low uh, in Hudson's Bay. It's amazing how far north it's raining uh, because there's no cold air. That system just kind of falls apart. This Gulf flow is going to hang out for a little bit. And now the storm that's come into California will move uh, into the Rockies. And, and actually, uh, there'll be some decent snows for Wyoming, northernmost Colorado into Nebraska, South Dakota, and Minnesota out of this as we get toward late Thursday into Friday. You know, that low winds up going into Wisconsin, and it picks up this Gulf low that's going to be sitting off the Florida coast. So a little bit of Gulf mo ocean, Gulf moisture gets injected into this, and we have a, a um, cold front that will be moving through here in the east uh, along about late Saturday. Now, until then, uh, I just want to show you that on Thursday, with a west wind at, in play for most of the day, uh, it's going to be very warm. We'll see temperatures once again in the 60s to around 70 with some record-breaking highs from, I would think, from Virginia on up into southern New England. I think record-breaking highs are certainly possible. And then uh, looking at that low going into the western lakes, 
and moving northeastward from there. Now we'll shift our attention to the west, and there's that next storm. And this is Saturday night, actually Sunday morning, 1 a.m., and that storm uh, begins to spread rain in during the morning on Sunday into the just about the entire state. The actual low center will move over, according to this model anyway, and it seems to make sense because the European is pretty much on the same uh, uh, page with this. Um, we get that low to move up uh, into uh, over San Francisco, but you can see this arm of rain that goes all the way down into Southern California. I'll get a little tighter here. We'll go to the um, west view, and I'll pull up the forecast rainfall amounts. Um, we'll go total accumulated precip, and it is substantial. Um, it, at least uh, through uh, early next early Tuesday, the 28th. You no know, big rains and, and heavy snows, of course. And the dark purples are talking about five inches or more of rain uh, along the uh, uh, Sierra Nevadas, but it extends pretty far down into Central California. And then you know blotches of two to three inch rains up and down the coast, which will be problematic on top of the rain that's already uh, fallen. So uh, this is going to be something that is going to be watched very very closely. Uh, as we uh, move through the weekend. And in fact, I'll show you how it looks on the surface map here because you'll have the tighter view. And I'll back it up. So here's that low. And you can see that the actual low center kind of comes down out from the southwest. So there's this feeder band of moisture that that extends deep from the tropics. So this is where you really put down, some places will put down 5 to 10 inch plus rainfalls. And of course, there'll be gales up and down the coast with that all those uh, lines of equal pressure, these isobars, uh, when they're really tight and tight together like that, the pressure gradient is very tight, so you're going to have some strong winds. So that low moves uh, e inland. And by the way, this becomes the catalyst for a pattern in the longer term as we go in through the next few weeks uh, where we're going to see system after system uh, moving across from west to east. The pattern going into March is getting very active. So, you know, we get this cold front here in the east to move on through, but there's a, a, a little disturbance that's going to be rotating around that the GFS picks on. It doesn't do very much. Uh, it brings through an area of snow, light, very light precipitation. And, you know, to be frank, the other models really don't show uh, much of anything with this. Um, this was proposed by the model to be a deep low to go to the Great Lakes just a few days ago. And you can see how it's changed. It's kind of lost all that. And the emphasis is going to be on the next one. This is the one that comes into California on Sunday, and that produces some uh, heavy snows uh, pretty far south into Arizona and New Mexico with this one. Uh, the low comes out of southern Colorado, so there'll be some snows there, and it runs up toward the Great Lakes. So uh, this will be another one that tracks to the west, and then a weather front will move on through, colder air behind it. It's a very fast flow, no blocking, so it's one system after another after another. Uh, model still wants to insist there's some kind of a major storm around day 11 and 12 going to the Great Lakes. I've been skeptical about these things, uh, and it's been wise to remain skeptical because they don't seem to be happening that way. But uh, the pattern does show that we're going to get shots of cold air coming into the east. They'll be transient, uh, but there'll be weather fronts moving through every couple of days, so uh, the warm-ups in between will be brief. And at least through this run of the model, there are no snow events that are being indicated, at least um, directly being indicated. Uh, but I continue to argue the fact that if there, if there is going to be a snow event during the first part of March, much like it did through a good chunk of the winter, it's not going to show up that well in the long range. You may not even see it till it's inside seven days. So let's look at the uh, upper air because um, this has changed a little bit since yesterday. And, you know, we're going to start here, uh, which is we're the 21st of, of um, February. So, you know, you still have this uh, flow from the Pacific, but notice that the vortex in Canada as we go, uh, the vortex complex in Canada does begin to strengthen a bit uh, as we move through the weekend. Uh, you still have troughing here out in the west uh, with this, you know, endless Pacific jet that continues to just feed in system after system. But this one might be the last one uh, for a little while, uh, the way it's going. And let's see how the model takes it out. So once that trough moves out, it doesn't seem to want to drop another one, at least not, a, not initially, like it has been with the others. It's a bit more of a flatter look um, overall. So you start to see a little bit more of a flow out of Canada here over time as we uh, start to go in through the first week of March. 
uh, at a bit of a ridge out here in the Pacific. So that, I think, slows the parade of storms um, down just a bit. Um, so it might be uh, uh, some quieter times coming for the West after this major storm. And in fact, uh, if we go a little further in the long term, we do have the appearance of an upper air ridge here in the West, which is um, interesting, and a deep, tr deeper trough in the eastern part of the United States toward the end of the period. So you do have some semblance of a polar flow. Now, how that's going to translate at the surface in the long term remains to be seen. But the bottom line is that that we have uh, we have a volatile period of weather ahead. This is not going to be a, a locked in um, pattern. It's going to be changing quite a bit, and we're going to be seeing a lot of different things go on. Uh, across a large uh, part of the country. So uh, we'll uh, uh, keep you posted on, on on this, of course. And we will also uh, keep you abreast of uh, developments with this potential uh, major storm that uh, may affect California uh, come this weekend. Uh, we'll keep an eye on things, uh, being that, again, with the uh, extent of the uh, storm from last weekend in terms of the amount of rain that it, it produced, um, we're going to uh, watch this one carefully because this is not going to take much to cause some serious flooding problems here if we get a scenario like this. And by the way, if we look at the snow from this, because uh, I know a lot of you skiers want to go west, um, and well, why not? I mean, there's tons of snow here through the next 10 days uh, with the almost 60 inch plus amounts, five feet of snow up and down. Uh, the mountains in California, even some snow in the mountains of Southern California, lots of snow up uh, in Northern California and up through Oregon and in through Nevada. So, you know, you want to ski, enjoy. you got tons of snow here. All right, so everybody have a great day. Uh, latest uh, weather on the meteorologist joechaffee.com on the website, and you can download my app uh, and subscribe to my forecast. The link is going to come up above or just a buck a month. For New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, and Hudson Valley, and Eastern Pennsylvania, um, and they're very zone specific, so you'll get something tailored to you. And uh, also, if once again, if you like my YouTube channel, I really appreciate you being here. If you're in the West, spread the word that somebody's talking about you guys. Uh, you can share my videos out. I would really appreciate it. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's absolutely free, and you'll get notified when new videos come up. Everybody have a great day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.